I'm going to show you how to make this time warped walkability map. It contorts true geography to better fit our conception of walking distance. It's based on an idea from Waldo Tobler, and we will misuse GIS to make ours. Well, I'm back and rested after a mind melting week in San Diego at the Esri User Conference. If you've never been before, A, it's pretty awesome, and B, it's a lot. But that includes a lot of walking. I mean, just walking from one end of the convention center to the other is more than I'm used to walking in a month. And I was marching up and down that thing so many times a day. Quick emotional timeout. If you saw me there and you said hi, thanks for being so cool. The only reason I get to do any of this stuff is because of you, and I just love you. Push those tears down to your feet, Nelson, or we'll never get through this. Anyway, here are the walkability areas that can be reached within 10, 20, or 30 minutes of the intersection of Broadway and 4th in beautiful downtown San Diego. And here is a version of this same map that might better fit our mental model for a walkability map where the rings of accessibility are just concentric circles. How do we warp imagery by time? The answer is georeferencing and a devious hack. <laughs> I'll create my walkability zones by searching for drive time and fire up this sweet geoprocessing tool from Business Analyst. Generate drive time trade areas. I already drew an origin point feature, so I'll add that. And I'll choose walking time as my method. And I'll add the distances of 10, 20, and 30 minutes. The results are these three concentric blobbies, approximating reasonably where I could get to within 10, 20, or 30 minutes of walking. I've created a layout, and I've added my walkability blob map to it. I want to export this layout as a georeferenced image. So from the Share tab, I'll choose Export Layout and name it SD Poly, and I'll make sure to check Write World File. That georeferences the resulting image, meaning it knows where it lives geographically. And then I'll export a second version of this image, this time without my walkability blobbies. I'll name it something else and hit export. The result of all this is two georeferenced images of San Diego, one with walkability zones and one without. Okay, so I'll go back to my map and now I'm going to add in one of these images that I just exported, the one with the walkability polygons. Next, I'll fire up the multi-ring buffer tool and around my origin point, I'll add three distances, a half a mile, one mile, and one and a half miles. There's nothing special about these distances, just as long as they're equally spaced. I came to these after some trial and error because they roughly matched the distances of my time-based walkability polygons. So to take inventory, we have this georeferenced image with walkability territories baked into it and these three beautiful concentric rings, which I'll use as a visual reference in the next step, which is georeferencing. Georeferencing is one of those things in mapping that just brushes up against magic. You take a bitmap, a picture, a bunch of pixels, and then you tell a pixel where it belongs on the surface of the earth. If you do that to enough pixels, it can stretch and warp and fit onto true geography. You breathe geographic life into it. In college, I had a professor who called it rubber sheeting, which to me sounds gross. With my image layer selected, I'll go to the imagery tab and choose geo reference. I'm going to add control points. Each control point is a two-step process. You click on the image and then you click the point on the map where it belongs. A, B, A, B. And my devious task here is to line up each walkability ring with each of my nice concentric buffer rings. My goal is to make the wobbly walkability zones as round as possible. And when I've added enough control points, I unlock a transformation type called spline. And then I'll just like save it, man. Thank you, Circular Buffers, your job is done here. And now I have a walkability map of San Diego where the wobbly polygons are a little bit more round. Round enough for us, anyway. Up next is the hack. It's a bait and switch job on Pro. I'm gonna swap the file names of these two images so it loads the other one when it thinks it's loading the one I just geo-referenced and everything. But in order to do that, I need to save and close Pro. Otherwise, these things would be locked. Here are my two files. I'll name the one with the walkability zones, psh, whatever and then I'll name the one without them the file name of the image that did have the walkability zones. So when I fire up Pro, it's happy to show me the warped version, but without walkability zones, and it's none the wiser. These are the tricks, people. And back in my layout, I have a pristine version of a time-warped walkability map of San Diego, or wherever your neighborhood is. The bounds of space and time and good taste can't prevent you from being as creative as you wanna be. I hope you give it a try for your area of interest. It's a lot of fun. Here's a version I made a while back of Seattle. It would bring me great joy to see one of these things for your neck of the woods.